What you are about to hear may scare you. If you are not ready for information that will not only change your worldview, but perhaps your life completely, then you should turn off this video now. When we last spoke last January, you weren't very optimistic about the global economy. What would you say about the state of the economy now? The system is in collapse and it's, it's unbelievable and most people don't even see what's going on. So what are the top things that are grabbing your attention right now? Mostly uh, it's how the US government and the Federal Reserve are reacting to all the problems. We're in the last days of this financial system in the US. This is Zimbabwe. This ship is going down. This is the USSR in 1989. Well, lots of people would, wouldn't believe you. They'd say, you know what, you're out in left field. You're nuts. In the meantime, in 2011, he told his subscribers to start getting into Bitcoin at $3. It soon went to over $200, and he was called crazy yet again. Joining us now is the chief editor of the Dollar Vigilante, and he's a Bitcoin entrepreneur, Jeff Berwick. Jeff, welcome back. Let me get this clear here. Your side of the Bitcoin story is that you put out, or you want to put out, ATMs. So you're the point of contact where I put in my US greenback dollars and I get back Bitcoins. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm sure that in the past week people have said to you, Jeff, it's a scam. Answer the question. After Bitcoin rose from $100 in April, it rose to $400 by November. Bitcoin is a new evolving currency, uh, and uh, because of that, and it's a very small market, the total market cap of Bitcoin is $1 billion. Uh, so we're only back to where Bitcoin was at the start of this month, uh, so it has been quite volatile. Since that time, Bitcoin rose to over $1,000 and is now back below $500, but has been very volatile, as he warned. Uh, well, it started the year at 15, so it's very volatile, it's very small. And so people are really trying to gauge if this is going to become a real currency. If it becomes more and more used as a real currency, it will continue to go up as demand goes up. Now, however, he is making his latest, most dire prediction. He is calling for a major disruptive event in not only the markets, but possibly in politics, the money system, and your way of life. All to come, possibly as soon as September 15th, 2015. It is a pleasure to have back on with us world-famous adventurer, entrepreneur, investor, and writer, Jeff Berwick. This may be our most important show yet, so let's get right into this, as you're not going to want to miss what Jeff Berwick has to say today. And, uh... Jeff, you've never been shy about telling people your opinions, but your latest pronouncement may be your boldest yet. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I really think now is the time to be bold. I found that most people don't know about this information, and I think it needs to be shown the light of day. I guess I should start by saying that I've never made such an exact short-term prediction, but when people see the evidence I've uncovered, they'll understand why I believe a massive event could happen as early as this September. Give us some background on how you came to this conclusion. Well, it started out quite simply. In 2010, I stated that the US dollar would collapse within the next decade. To me, the path was quite clear. You just look at the total debt of the US government, now at $18 trillion, and its growth, and you can see where this is headed. And when you look further, you can see that even with a monstrous $18 trillion debt, it was only a small part of the story as so much of the debt and liabilities of the US aren't properly accounted for. Today, the amount of debt and liabilities of the US government is over $95 trillion. That's $300,000 per person in the US, or $1.2 million in federal government debt and liabilities for every family of four. I'm sure you remember the Great Recession or the financial crisis of 2008. It was very bad. And even George Soros was quoted on it as saying, we witnessed the collapse of the financial system in 2008. And all they've done, and all they're still doing, is print money to act like it didn't die. But the proof is in the numbers. 
In 2008, the Federal Reserve announced something they had never done before. They called it quantitative easing. But what it really is, is printing never before seen amounts of money. That money's been sloshing around and has mostly ended up in places like the stock market, which, even as we speak, continues to hit all-time highs. At some point, though, this money printing game has to stop, and the rest of the world knows this is a certainty. And in response, countries around the world have begun to move away from the dollar. China's begun their own bank transfer system, which is the first international payment system to compete with the US dollar-based SWIFT system. There's a worldwide move away from the dollar. They're trying to rush it out to be completed by, of all dates, September 2015. Russia as well has been purchasing gold at record levels and trade agreements around the world are for the first time in decades being done outside of the US dollar. For this and many other reasons, I've been expecting a collapse in the dollar. It's baked in the cake. And I've been telling my subscribers to prepare for this since 2010. Back in 2010, I said that we probably had five and no more than 10 years left before the collapse. We're now five years in and I'm seeing the first signs of a major collapse coming this fall. And part of my reason for this has come with my discovery of the Shemitah. Right, this is the part I wanna get into. I've heard you speak and write on it recently. It sounds fascinating. Take as long as you want here and just tell us more about the Shemitah. Sure, regarding Shemitah, I wanna state for the record that my discovery of it has emerged as part of my financial analysis. The Shemitah has religious connotation, but that's not my focus. The point is that there are evidence-based ramifications to Shemitah, and from a practical standpoint, that's what I wish to investigate and address. I'm just looking at the facts of what appears to be happening around September of this year, and that just happens to be the end of the Shemitah year. Whether this is a coincidence or not remains to be seen. And I should also say that I don't necessarily think this September will be the end crisis of all crises. It could be just the beginning of a process that unfolds that takes many years to end in total collapse. But that said, I first heard of the Shemitah after reading Jonathan Kahn's book, The Harbinger. That book mostly talked about eerie events related to 9-11 and the Shemitah. While I found all the events related to 9-11 to be incredibly interesting, the thing that really got my interest was in what he said about the Shemitah. Now as background, the Shemitah is the Sabbath year, and it's the seventh year of the seven-year agricultural cycle mandated by the Torah for the land of Israel, and it's still observed in contemporary Judaism. To put it simply, every seven years is a Shemitah year. Because it is based on the Hebrew calendar, it doesn't fall on the same dates every year as our Western calendar, but it does follow quite closely. The Shemitah is also known as a time where all debts are settled, every seven years. It also can be interpreted as the washing away of things. But what caught my attention was that the last day of the Shemitah, for the last two Shemitahs in 2001 and 2008, fell on days with a major market collapse. The last day of Shemitah in 2001 fell on September 17th, and that was the first day the U.S. stock markets opened after 9-11. That day had the greatest one-day stock market point crash in U.S. history up to that time. The Dow fell almost 700 points, or 7%, and it was a record that held for precisely seven years until the end of the next Shemitah year. That year was 2008. On September 29th, 2008, the exact final day of the Shemitah, the Dow plummeted 777 points, which still today remains the greatest one-day stock market crash of all time. You may be noticing quite a few sevens in all of this. As well, on that day, it was the only known day on the New York Stock Exchange where the opening bell wouldn't ring. You're watching CNBC's Squawk on the Street, where the opening bell should have rung five seconds ago, but has not. I don't know whether we actually need the bell to start trading. Hold on. There is a little bit of a consternation down here about there being no bell. All right. Our market reporters are, are standing by. Bob Pisani, have you ever seen anything like Nobel? Yeah, uh, that's a little strange here. But... I then decided to go back to Shemitah years since 1900, and I was very surprised at what I found. 1917 was a Shemitah year. 1917 marked the year that the U.S. entered into World War I, and soon after, the Russian, German, Austrian, and Turkish empires had collapsed. Remember, the Shemitah is a time of washing away. 1930-1931 was a Shemitah year, and certainly wasn't a good time to be in the markets. From the beginning of the Shemitah year until the end of the Shemitah, the market dropped 50% from 200 to 100, 
And then after the final day of the Shemitah, the market dropped another 50% to below 50. Now, the next major Shemitah was in 1937 to 1938, and if you were in the market that year, you'd have lost nearly 50%. But more importantly than the stock market during that Shemitah year was what was going on in the world. During the Shemitah year in 1938, Germany began foreign aggression and seized Austria and Czechoslovakia. The world war that began in 1938 finally ended in September of 1945, nearly on the exact same day as the final day of the Shemitah. Countless empires and countries were left devastated by that date, again a washing away if you will. The next Shemitah was in 1973. In 1973 the Bretton Woods Worldwide Monetary System collapsed. The following Shemitah was in 1980, seen by most gold bugs and market historians as marking the end of the massively inflationary 1970s. Then the next Shemitah year ended in 1987. During that time Black Monday occurred, the biggest one day percentage drop in history on the Dow. That same week, the London stock market closed due to an extremely rare hurricane having hit London. Again, a sort of washing away. During the next Shemitah, the 1994 bond market massacre caused financial strife worldwide. And I've already mentioned the incredibly bizarre things that happened during the next two Shemitahs in 2001 and 2008. Of course, you can say that if you look for patterns, you can always find them in one way or another. And to an extent, that's true. But this Shemitah seven-year cycle is so eerily correct that it is well known on Wall Street as the seven-year cycle. For this reason, I've been keeping an eye on the end of the next Shemitah year on September 13th, 2015. And because of this, I began doing some research on what events may be happening in or around that time. And the amount of bizarre things scheduled for this coming September is what convinced me something is being planned for this fall. Yes. Everything you've covered so far is the past. Let's talk about the present and near future. Well, I, I decided to begin looking up the days on or around September 13th of this year to see if I could find any interesting events, and it didn't take long before I found numerous events all happening on or around that date of major significance. The first thing I found was that the United Nations opens its 70th session of the UN General Assembly on September 15th in New York City. World leaders from around the world will be attending. They call it their Jubilee Session. Now, I didn't mention this yet, but every seventh Shemitah, or in other words, every seventh seven-year period, or after every 49 years, is called the Jubilee Year, every 50 years. In the Jubilee, according to Jewish religion, it is the year when God, supposedly, gives back land taken away from their ancestors to them. Of note, in the last Jubilee, in 1967, Israel won the Seven Day War when Israel defeated Jordan and captured the West Bank, defeated Egypt and captured the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula, and defeated Syria and captured the Golan Heights. Looking even further back to the prior Jubilee year in 1918, the British Empire took back Jerusalem from the Turkish Ottoman Empire. And so in both prior Jubilee years, there was a major development in Israel. The next Jubilee year starts on September 14th of this year. As well, in September, the UN plans to launch a new plan for managing the entire globe called the Sustainable Development Summit from September 25th to 27th. Some of the biggest names on the planet, including Pope Francis, will be speaking at this summit. The focus of this plan is to expand the scope of global governance. Global governance can also be defined as one world government or a new world order. The Pope, interestingly enough, will be busy in the US all of September, as on September 15th, the Pope will also be speaking at the UN, and then on September 24th, he'll also be speaking at the US Congress. The next thing I notice is that Jade Helm, a massive unprecedented rollout of the US military inside of the US, runs from July 15th until September 15th. This is particularly interesting in that there always seems to be a drill being run by the government during when an actual crisis occurs. Jade Helm has already begun in preparations and the amount of military equipment being amassed in the US is truly mind boggling. There's a lot of speculation that this amount of military buildup in the American South is in preparation for some sort of civil unrest. That speculation built when a number of Walmart stores recently closed on the same day across the southern US with no notice due to plumbing problems and are said to remain closed for six months. 
this fueled speculation that it's to be used for some sort of detention center for unrest. They said they wouldn't reopen for six months, which just happens to be after September. But it gets stranger and stranger. Recently, the New York-based Federal Reserve announced it's moving its operations outside of New York to Chicago because of concerns about a natural disaster. One might ask, what natural disaster are they expecting in New York that they aren't expecting in Chicago? Then, after the Fed's recent Federal Open Market Committee meeting, it took the highly unusual act of removing all calendar references from its post-meeting statement. Normally, in the post-meeting statement, they include calendar events for upcoming important dates like the next meeting. This time, they didn't, and they just alluded that a date range for their long-awaited 0.25% rate hike, which alone can almost teeter the entire financial and monetary system loaded with debt, would likely be in the fall. But while they didn't put any dates of future meetings in their post-meeting notes, they do have dates on their website of upcoming meetings. According to their site, the next meeting will be held just after the Shemitah on September 16th and 17th. Meanwhile, the U.S. federal government is buying another 62 million rounds of ammunition commonly used in AR-15s for training purposes, and NORAD announced that it is moving back into the Cheyenne Mountains because it is EMP-hardened, leaving one to ask why NORAD is moving into the mountains to protect against a major attack at this time. It certainly appears as though a lot is happening all surrounding this September. Absolutely, and the list of strangeness goes on and on. There was the strange seven-minute speech by Christine Lagarde of the IMF talking about numerology and the number seven that she made in January of last year. She started the speech by saying, as you can tell, I do what I'm told. And she went on to say, I want to test your numerology skills on the magic number seven. Most of you know that is quite a number. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, as you can tell, I, I do as I'm told. Numerology skills by asking you to think about the magic seven. Okay? Most of you will know that seven is quite a number in all sorts of themes, religions. That's a strange speech about numerology and the number seven coming from the managing director of the IMF. There was also French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius, who made a bizarre speech in 2014, stating that we are on the edge of a climactic abyss. We are, all of you know it, on the edge of a climatic abyss. In fact, we have 500 days to avoid a climate chaos. Out of curiosity, I added up the days from that speech, and 500 days from it lands on September 23rd, 2015. Yet no one questioned him why 500 days exactly. You can find many more examples like this. Everything seems to be gravitating towards this September. Something's going on. What that is, is anyone's guess. You want to take a guess? Uh, there's too many variables to make a solid guess, but this is far too many coincidences that all seem to point to something massive happening around September of this year. Also, there's Martin Armstrong, who was jailed for having a computer model that amazingly predicts the fall of currencies, markets, and even nations, predicted 20 years ago that there will be a massive system reset, collapse, or crisis on October 1st, 2015. If you listen to the actions of the Fed, they seem to be worried about some sort of natural disaster to happen in the New York area. If you listen to NATO, they appear to be preparing for an EMP attack. If you pay attention to the U.S. military, they are apparently preparing for a massive amount of unrest inside the U.S. And if you pay attention to the U.N., September seems to be a very busy month with leaders from around the world, including the Pope, attending numerous major events. In fact, we've already seen the first rumblings of a coming collapse happening in both Greece and China. The Shanghai stock market has already begun to collapse, falling more than 30% in the last two months, and the Chinese Nasdaq fell 40% in the last three weeks. And in Greece, the banks and stock market have been closed for weeks, and they're laying the foundation for a civil chaos that I expect to fully foment over the summer and explode in September. This will set off a chain reaction that will shake the entire U.S. dollar-based financial system. This is enough evidence for me not to be anywhere near the U.S. from now until at least October, and specifically in the month of September. 
This is just too much happening all at once for my comfort. I've also been advising for years to have no significant assets in US dollars and certainly not in the US bank. And I reiterate that more so now based on what I see happening in the coming months. If I'm totally wrong and nothing major happens during that period, then great. It's really not of any harm to prepare for some catastrophic event in the financial and political systems during that time because my advice for preparing for the end of the monetary system as we know it is the same for this September period as it has been for the last few years and still continues to be. I'm just getting more adamant on it now. I've been advising people to get out of the Western financial and monetary system, get into hard assets, keep cash, precious metals, food, water, and guns on hand to last for at least a number of months, and move yourself and your wealth outside of the US if possible. I think there will be trouble all over the Western world, but the US seems to be ground zero for this coming crisis. These are all very ominous and negative predictions and advice. Are there any potential positives? Oh yes, absolutely. During any crisis is often an opportunity to become wealthy. As long as you are aware of what's going on, this could provide tremendous opportunity. Most fortunes have been made in times of extreme crisis that hardly anyone saw coming. Very few market analysts see what's going on, and so we have a great advantage over them when the collapse comes, as most don't think a collapse is even possible, much less imminent. So how can people get more information and advice on not only how to prepare for this upcoming crisis, but also profit from it? Yes, we've created a special report on how to prepare to survive the coming collapse, as well as how to profit from it. I'm offering this report for free because I think this information is too important to withhold from anyone. And the information in this report will keep you in good stead, even if there is no major collapse in the fall. The collapse may just be beginning in the fall and may last many years. This information will give you what you need to survive during that period if you act on it. We're now in the final end game for the collapse of monetary, financial, political, and economic systems. Those who are prepared and can make it through the transition with themselves and their assets intact will be able to take advantage of wealth building opportunities of a generational level. Those who are not prepared are going to get hurt in this collapse.